carbon rings? Really? You want to know about carbon rings? Just remember, you wanted this. Carbon rings are the most misunderstood manifestation of barrel fouling that there is. They are commonly blamed for maladies like flyers, difficult bolt lift, hard extraction, blown primers, big groups, high ES, gingivitis, diarrhea, constipation, hemorrhoids, erectile dysfunction, and bad wind calls. They are the boogeyman of the internet shooting community, the monster under the bed of precision shooting. Today, let's get into the reality of what a carbon ring really is, where it grows, and what it does in your rifle, and best of all, how to prevent having problems in the first place. Now, I know several people have requested that I show borescope pictures of what a carbon ring looks like, but I have a question for those people. What kind of an expert would I be if I let carbon rings grow in my barrels to the point where they made a difference and caused a problem? Not a very good one, if you ask me. I don't have any barrels with carbon rings for a very good reason. Let's start with what carbon rings are and where they grow. If you compress carbon, under high pressure and high temperature, you get a very hard substance. And a true carbon ring, not just a wishful carbon ring, has hard carbon in it. That means that it is not coming out the easy way. You're going to have to remove it abrasively. We'll get into some techniques for that in just a minute. But now that we understand what it is, we got to know where to look for it. In order to do that, we need a chamber diagram. This is the chamber diagram for my newest invention. The 7mm Pro Shooter. Let's section this sucker out just in case you don't know what a chamber drawing looks like. This is the shoulder. Here is the neck where the neck of the case goes. And this is the free bore. When we put a case into a chamber, it has clearance around the periphery. So there's a little gap between the brass and the steel. There's also a gap at the front of the mouth of the case. And that's the important part. Because that's where the carbon starts to build up. Now. The finish on the inside of the barrel chamber is critical to whether you get carbon rings that stick really well or not, because it is an adhesion of that carbon to the steel. If you don't have enough room, enough space for it to adhere to, and you do not have a finish that is conducive to things growing on it, it's not going to stick as well, and it'll just come out with regular barrel cleaning. So the carbon ring forms in front of the mouth of the case, between that and the freeboard. Now you might get some carbon that drags up into the freeboard a little bit if you have enough freeboard clearance for it to fit in there, but in reality, you're not gonna see a whole lot of that. The manifestation is in this transition area, typically. So what does it do? It continues to build up until it has restricted that area to the point where the bullet has to slide past the carbon to get into the freeboard which tends to scuff up the bullet, which is the first indication that you have a problem. If you load around and then eject it still alive, and that bullet's all scuffed up all the way down to the mouth of the case, you have a carbon ring that you need to take care of. If you aren't getting scuffs on the bullet, it's probably not a carbon ring. Borescope or no borescope, doesn't matter. If it's not touching the bullet as the bullet goes into the free bore, it's not a carbon ring. Now that we know where a carbon ring lives and what it is, Let's talk about what it does to your rifle. It obviously increases pressure. I've seen this myself on barrels that I was shooting, so I know it increases pressure. But why does it increase the pressure? The things that humans know about what happens inside the chamber at the moment of ignition are extremely limited. 99.9% .9 of the stuff I read on the internet is a guess by someone. It might be a good educated guess, but it's still a guess. Nobody has figured out a way to instrument this in a way that made any sense that we could get good solid data. In other words, we don't know if the carbon is blocking the flow of gases around the bullet, if it's causing the bullet to not move forward as easily, and causing a buildup of pressure if it's doing something else in there. It really doesn't matter what is causing it, it's what does it cause that matters. So the what it causes is increased pressures which means that in order to get consistent pressures for consistent velocities, for consistent tune, we need to make sure we don't have a carbon ring. But that's a lot easier than you think it might be. If you already have a carbon ring, you're gonna have to remove it. The hint here is it is hard carbon. I have yet to find any solvent that will remove one without some abrasion. You're gonna have to use a brush to remove a carbon ring. Now, I know there are some people out there that have used aluminum arrow shafts with teeth cut in the tips of it. 
that worked pretty well for removing carbon rings, but that's a very limited application because, well, aluminum arrow shafts are a little hard to come by now and they only come in a few different sizes. I definitely would not use any hard metal material in your chamber because that steel, that stainless steel is easy to cut. That's one of the characteristics that makes it good barrel steel. If you go in there with a piece of 304 stainless, you're probably gonna damage the chamber, so don't do that. Just simply don't do that. For me, it's a bronze brush on a short cleaning rod, a bronze brush that is a couple sizes bigger than the bore because we don't want that brush going down the bore. We wanna come up to that transition and clean that transition area. So the real trick to carbon rings is prevention. And that is the key here. Prevent a carbon ring from getting big enough to cause a problem. That means you need to clean your barrel frequently. How frequently you ask? Well, that depends on what powder you're using and what cartridge it is and a lot of other factors. You need to monitor your barrel and figure out what is too much. Never cleaning the barrel is obviously going to create problems over time. Cleaning it every other shot is going to cause problems over time. You have to find that balance point and that is up to you to figure out for yourself based on the cartridge you are shooting. In the six dasher, I can run 150 or 200 rounds between cleanings without any difficulty whatsoever with the powders that I'm using. In summary, carbon rings really aren't responsible for everything they're blamed for on the internet. They live in the chamber, in the transition between the neck and the freebore, and they tend to squeeze down that area that the bullet passes through getting into the freebore, which seems to be the cause of all the problems. The problem being increased pressure. And last but not least, the best strategy is to prevent them in the first place by cleaning that barrel and cleaning that transition area more frequently so that they never build up to the point where they actually build up to the bullet. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful to you. Until next time, shoot straight, clean your barrel. We'll see you in the next video.